Hey guys, it's Alicia and welcome back to my channel and welcome to the start of a vlog that is going to take me seven weeks to film. If you were on Instagram at all, you probably saw the amazing release of the sweater weather series which is a fall series that seven authors are doing seven books in seven weeks and i'm so excited all fall all around the same town and it's going to be so much fun so i will tell you who the authors are and what the books are called and i thought that it would be fun to do a vlog of me reading all seven books because I just got I'm on the ARC team for Emma St. Clair and I just got my copy of her book so we'll start this so just don't fall by Emma St. Clair the fall back the fall back plan by Melanie Jacobson can't help falling by Courtney Walsh Faking the Fall by Julie Christensen, Easiest Pie by Karina Taylor, A Not-So-Fictional Fall by Savannah Scott, and Absolutely Not in Love by Jenny Proctor. August 31st, Emma St. Clair's comes out. September 7th, Melanie Jacobson's. September 14th, Courtney's. September 21st, Julie's. September 28th, Karina's. October 5th, Savannah's. And October 12th, Jenny's. And I am so excited. So every Thursday, starting on the 31st, there will be a new fall book coming out. And I am so excited. I love all of these women. Their books are amazing. They're hilarious. And I'm so excited to read these books. Um, so I am going to be starting this vlog a little early. It is August 21st. So 10 days before First to Fall comes out. But... Again, I am on, hello, got so close. I am on Emma's street team, and I just got my advanced reader's copy of the first book, and I'm so excited because it is, in fact, a hockey romance, and it is if the Savannah Bananas met hockey, and I am so excited because one thing about me, I am obsessed with the Savannah Bananas. <laughs> Oh, just don't fall. I literally just said that and here I am forgetting. Listen, there are a lot of a lot of titles to remember. So I have my arc all loaded up on my Kindle and I am super excited. I don't know how much reading um, I'll be able to get done tonight because it is already 930. Um, but the book I don't think is very long so I'll probably fly through it. But I'm super excited to be starting this, and I hope you guys enjoy coming along with me as I read the Sweater Weather series. So buckle up, it's going to be a long vlog. It's going to take me seven weeks to do this. why I don't read at night typically um the answer is this I have no self-control I've completely forgot to film me even reading I'm 82% into this book it's almost one o'clock and I will be staying up to finish this it is so good um hockey romance fake dating ex best friend brother's ex-best friend, um, workplace romance, I did say hockey already, right, that's clean and never been kissed, that's a fun trope to read, but the chemistry, the sizzling tension, the laughs I have laughed, the swoons I have swooned, and this date that they're on currently, obsessed um so good so i'll catch you when i'm done bye all right friends i am getting ready to hit the hay it's almost two now um but i finished just don't fall absolutely amazing five out of five stars 
I absolutely loved, loved the chemistry and Parker and Logan and just them together and the conversations that they had. And while there were a few times that I wish, like I was getting ready to be like, oh, I wish you guys would just communicate and just talk to each other it also made sense to their characters in the plot so I guess the miscommunication was okay and when it mattered that they had a conversation they did so I am okay with it I guess but it was amazing I absolutely loved it Emma is such a talented author and it was a great way to kick off the series and welcome us to the town and all their cutesy hallmarky fall things and all the apple stuff and I'm so excited and I'm so excited for you guys and by the time this is out the books will be out um but I think you should definitely add the sweater weather series to your TBR so next time I see you won't be until the first Thursday of September. Whenever Melanie's book comes out, I'll have to wait to get that um, in paperback from Amazon because the only ARC teams I'm on are Emma's and Savannah's. So those will be the only early copies that I get. But next time you see me, I will be reading Melanie's and I'm very excited for that. I don't know much, honestly, about the books. I didn't do a whole lot of research or a whole lot of like paying attention to what tropes the books have other than Emma's and Savannah's um, because I like to go into books blind. So I will let you know what Melanie's is all about when I get it. So I'll see you guys in a couple weeks. <laughs> Bye! Hello y'all, it is September 1st, which means that it is officially one day after the official release of book one in the Sweater Weather series, Just Don't Fall. I got my paper back. I meant to show you guys the clip of me opening it, but I forgot to record it, but here it is. Absolutely stunning. You can read my review now. It is up on Goodreads, Amazon, and my Instagram account. So exciting things are happening it's starting so next Thursday the 7th Melanie Jacobson's book comes out very excited about that I have been stalking Amazon oh, hi. hoping that she might release the paperback copy early um, as of now she is not and I did not get on her arc team so I do not have an advanced copy of that so I will have to wait until next Thursday to read it but I did I did get on the team for Can't Help Falling by Courtney Walsh, which is book three, so that will come out on September 14th. So I have an arc of that, and I'm very excited. So I will be reading that ASAP. So I will add that footage to the vlog as I start it. And then once I get Melanie Jacobs, Jacobson's book on next Thursday, I will also include my thoughts on that so i'm super excited for the series just so fall was absolutely so good great another clean hockey romance and there is potential talk that she might make it it's like the hockey boys get their own series because everybody fell in love with the boys from the team and she loves them so there might be might be a hockey romance series coming from Emma St. Clair at some point. We don't know yet. It's still kind of in the talks, but I'm excited because Felix's story is the last book of the series and he was introduced, he's a hockey player, and he was introduced in the first book and I'm very excited because Jenny Proctor is writing his story and we are getting Felix's story and I'm so excited because he was definitely one of my faves other than Logan. So I'm very excited to get his story as well. All right. Lots of things. I've done some filming today. So those videos will be out before this one. So go watch the tags. And then I will see you guys when I start Can't Help Falling. It's September 6th. I just got a package. <laughs> I just got an Amazon package with some books that I ordered. And they're both here early one of them is like super early but the other one comes out tomorrow and that is <laughs> the fallback 
Fall Back Plan by Melanie Jacobson. This comes out, or it will have been out on the 7th of September, so it is available. Look at that. Oh, I've heard nothing but amazing things about this one, so Soup's excited to read it. It's so much thinner than I was expecting, because the Fall Back Plan, or Just Don't Fall, I mean, it wasn't huge, but like it was a normal romance size book. So this one's kind of small, which is kind of nice. And then the other one, which is a week early, and it was it's actually been available to purchase on Amazon for probably two weeks. But I wanted to wait until the fallback plan was available. But it's Can't Help Falling by Courtney Walsh. Look at it. Obsessed. I still haven't read my um, ebook copy yet. have a couple other videos going on. But I will be reading it this week and I'm super excited because look at that ah, beautiful so I have books two and three in the series to go with just don't fall and y'all we're we're like almost halfway there even though timing wise no but the amount of books that I have yes it's so exciting so I will be doing um I'm currently in the middle of reading like doing a different vlog a weekly reading vlog so on Saturday I'll probably I might end my reading vlog early and focus on these so we shall see but you guys will know once I'm actually reading them because you'll have footage so okay look I got a package I'm so excited book mail yay hi it's release day for can't help falling and I, and I am curling 27% into it I started it last night before I went to bed um, somehow time got away from me and I didn't read it before it released, um, but I'm super excited. I'm really enjoying it. It's about Emmy, who owns the bookshop, and Owen, who is a firefighter. Uh, Owen is dyslexic, and they are, like, friends. She had a crush on him. It is best friend's brother. He had no clue she really existed, but they were, like, kind of, sort of. They had, like, this... Thing, but he never saw her that way but she was like in love with him and there was a fire and he saved her and there's just all these things and I'm really really liking it so I am probably gonna be staying up late because I'm off tomorrow to finish this and potentially read either the fallback plan by Melanie Jacobson which is book two and I haven't read it yet um, or start Julie Christensen's because hers comes out next week and I have an arc of that and I also got an arc of Savannah Scott's so lots of arc reading I'm super excited I'm loving the books and my camera's about to die so I'm gonna plug it in and keep reading so I'll update you guys in a bit Ooh, I am a hot mess wow um it is 12 30 and I just finished can't help falling a few minutes ago got my review on Goodreads and such. I ended up reading a 4 out of 5 star. I enjoyed it. I liked it. Emmy and Owen were dorms. And I really loved Emmy's growth from realizing that perfect romance isn't all grand gestures and romance rom-coms where the men are perfect because they're written by women. <laughs> Um, but it's in the small thoughtful things and it's in the practical love and it was just really sweet and the best friend's brother trope was so cute and just their friendship was so sweet and wholesome even if it was totally unrequited love on her part for many many years she still was his friend and just made him better and it was just, it really was cute. I really liked it. So now, because I'm still wide awake, I don't know if I want to start faking the fall or the fallback plan. It's kind of throwing me off reading them out of order, but they can be read out of order because they are technically standalones. They're just all told in the same town. Um, and there's like, slight crossover of the characters but like so like in Can't Help Falling um oh my word the Appies like made a quick little cameo like Felix was mentioned which is the goalkeeper and his book is the last book in the series so they can totally be read as standalones 
but again there's like that slight crossover where you'll like see somebody mentioned so I could wait on the fallback plan because I'm not on any arc teens and I could read faking the fall which is a fake dating celebrity romance I'm 90% sure and it just sounded, kind of sounds great and it's by Julie Christensen and I love her to bits and pieces and then I also have a not so fictional fall by Savannah Scott and that one is a book one with a Frenchman um but Savannah's comes out after Julie so I think I think baking the fall might be might be the plan guys <laughs> so I am going to go ahead and brush my teeth wash my face and fix this situation and then curl up and get ready to read baking the fall I'm trying to decide if I want to switch where I'm reading we'll decide we'll decide when I'm done but I will absolutely be taking this because perks of reading on a Kindle don't mind how boring this is perks of reading on a Kindle I've turned into a Kindle girly who am I um, you can read while in the bathroom because I can stick this on my sink and I can read while I'm brushing my teeth and washing my face so yay so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna go do all the things and then read <laughs> just finished baking the ball by Julie Christensen it was really cute it was like a it was a fake dating celebrity romance but also like best friend second chance young love situation and it was cute it was really cute so Still trying to decide what I'm going to rate it. I have to write my review. But I did want to pop on and say that I finished it. And while I'm still like awake, I should probably go to bed because <laughs> it's 5 a.m. Um, but I also want to keep reading. I don't know what to do. My dad's getting ready to wake up and get ready to go to work, so <laughs> his day's about to start, mine's about to end, but I kind of want to start Savannah's because she wrote a not-so-fictional fall. The thing is, I have a feeling that once I lay down in bed, I'm going to fall asleep. So, I'm going to be good, I'm going to go to sleep, I'm going to try to get a couple hours and try to wake up semi-early and get my stuff done tomorrow so that I can start a not so fiction fall. And yeah, so I'm going to write my review for Faking the Fall. Absolutely loving this series. Hi, I'll be honest, I don't know, um, I think the last time I updated you was when I was reading Faking the Fall by Julie Christensen. I stayed up 
to like 5 a.m., 5.30 to finish that little thing. Um, and that was a week ago, a week and a half ago, something like that. I don't know. I honestly haven't been reading a whole lot. Um, so, anywho, I'm popping on here to update you because I am in a not-so-fictional fall by Savannah Scott. I am... You see, I'm reading it on my Kindle right now, but I do have my paperback copy from Savannah, the sweetie little petite that she is. I'm on her ARC team. Just got to chapter 8 officially on my Kindle, so I'm really enjoying it. This one is a marriage of convenience story. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Okay, so it's a marriage of convenience story with a author, a romance author who is French, and he is the main guy character. He writes under a pen name and he comes out like saying like, hey, I was this author, here I am at this book event, and this, and then Tasha, who is the main lady, um, she went to this book event because she does like book stuff. She narrates and she's a um, like personal assistant to a bunch of authors and it's been so fun having the bookish world just to fully envelop in. In this part of it right now, we're on, we're on Marabella Island, which dovetails into the series she's currently working on, which is set in Marabella Island. So it's been super cool to see characters from Are We There Yet, Cameron, and Summer, and Ben, and it's just been a lot of fun. And I'm really, really enjoying it, as always. Savannah is an amazing author. She recently started putting um quotes at the chat like her chapter headings and I stopped on chapter eight to update you guys because I just read this quote and I absolutely love it because I 100% agree um like you don't just meet people by accident like you're meant to meet certain people and I just absolutely love that loving the book and I can't wait to keep reading it is getting kind of late um I'm gonna hang up some laundry and then I might I'm gonna get ready for bed like wash my face brush my teeth and stuff and then I will probably keep reading um, because this book does come out next Thursday the I believe next Thursday is the fifth easy as pie comes out tomorrow I did order my copy so hopefully it will be in the mail um, and then Absolutely Not In Love will come out the following week. So it's almost wrapped up. I can't believe it. I have read going on four of the seven. Um, so once I'm done with the Not So Fictional Fall, then I'm going to be jumping in and reading Karina's, Melanie's, and Jenny's. So I've got a lot to read still. This vlog will be so long, but I just wanted to check in and let you know that I am reading a not so fictional fall and I am enjoying it so far and I can't wait to keep reading it. And yeah, I'll check in with you guys later. Remember how I said that I was going to call it a night? I wasn't going to stay up late to read. Great, I'll talk about them more tomorrow. But I did want to let you know I lied. I have no self control whatsoever. So it's going to be a long day tomorrow. But worth it because it was so good. Highly recommend. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hey, friends, I just got home from work and I thought that I would actually talk to you. Um, and give you some of my thoughts for not so fictional fall that don't involve me whispering at two o'clock in the morning slightly delusional from just being so tired um so I did finish a not so fictional fall last night I told myself I'm gonna sit down I'm gonna put you off your bed hi <laughs> I told myself originally I was like I'm not gonna stay up very late I had to work a long shift today and I was like okay just get to the 50% mark once you're there, you can go to bed. You can finish it tomorrow. And then I got to the 50% mark. And all of a sudden, I looked down, and I was at 64%. And I was like, well, let's get to the 75% mark. And then I got to the 75% mark, and I was like, there's only 25% left of this book. I cannot set this down. And it was just so engaging and just so good because it's a modern, modern marriage of convenience. And Patty always said, Savannah always said, that it would have to be a very specific story for her to tackle that just because... Marriage of Convenience is, like, 
not very realistic. <laughs> So it had to be a very specific type of story, and I felt like it really worked. Um, if you've ever seen the movie Proposal, it was like a rom-com, a fall rom-com version of that, but better, you know. And so it was hilarious. It made me laugh. The family dynamics were so great between her and her sister, um, him and his family, and even him with her family and her with his family. And it was just really sweet and so wholesome and just so great. And I get five stars. One, because it's a Patty book and Patty is amazing. I love Savannah Scott's books. And two, because I mean, the story really deserved it. It was so good. And there's like slightly mistaken identity um, because he's an, a romance author that comes out with like this pen name and it's this whole thing and she's one of his biggest fans but she doesn't know that he like he's a he. Uh, it's, it's a whole it's a whole moment and that's all explained on the back of the book um, but also like within the first couple chapters. It's a lot of fun. Super bookish and so so great absolutely loved it and then today is release day and i got my copy in the mail of easy move my braid easy as pie by karina taylor and i'm super excited about this this is about trip and i think her name is hazel and i know nothing about this book i'm not gonna lie i just know that it was part of the sweater weather series so i bought it and i'm gonna read it so yes officially i have read all the ones that i need to read for review for being on art teams so I just have three more that I have to read I am gonna take a little bit of a break from reading them since they are technically not uh, necessities for me um, to read because I'm not on the reviewer teams but I will be taking a little bit of a break and reading some other arcs that I have to get to but the vlog will continue once I read the other three so I will check in with you guys um, once I start the other books and or when I get um, absolutely not in love in paperback. Whichever comes first. Y'all, I'm terrible at this. First of all, hi. <laughs> How are you? It is October 22nd. The Sweater Weather series has been out for two weeks, I think. And I still have two more to read. Technically, I had three yesterday. I've been in a bit of a slump. So, yeah. Nothing's really holding my attention very well. I haven't really been in the mood to read. Anywho, I got over that last night, sucked it up, and I read The Fallback Plan by Melanie Jacobson, which is technically book two in the Sweater Weather series, but I was reading them a little out of order um, because I was on review teams. But you absolutely can read them out of order. They're totally standalones. They all just happen to be happening in the same town. Um, let's see. Very short, which I loved. I read it last night. I ended up really liking it. I rated it a four and a half out of five. I struggled for a while in the beginning because the main girl character holds on to some bitterness, and like grudges from high school, which I always struggle with in characters. Like, it's been 15 years. Why are we still mad about this? But I was homeschooled for high school, so I wasn't bullied. <laughs> so I can't really talk from experience. But I just, it can come across kind of bitter. Like, they just don't have any joy in their life. And that just makes me sad. But it did get better. It made sense. The characters changed, and I really enjoyed them. It was about Jolie and Lucas. Lucas is the town sheriff. And Jolie bought the town, one of the town's bars, and she re renamed it Tequila Mockingbird. And there was like this slight mystery run through. It's called the Doll Bandit. And it was just a lot of fun. And he has uh, custody of his 10 year old niece. And Jolie takes a shining to Brooklyn. And it's just this whole thing. It's very sweet, very wholesome after she finally like starts to open up and start to feel again so it was very sweet i very much enjoyed it then i started easiest pie by karina taylor um 
and I got 90 pages into it last night and then realized I had church this morning and needed to go to bed. But this one's moving fast. This is a Best Friends Tomorrow about Hazel and Trip. And Trip is a doctor, an emergency room doctor, and Hazel is a mechanic. Um, there is some talk of cancer and like a banquet that they're doing so there's a lot of grief in this one I'm coming to find the best friend to more oh isn't always my favorite because it's always miscommunication because <laughs> they both well like okay so she falls first you already know that in the 90 pages like she started liking him three years ago and now she's a like ignoring him because she can't be around him now that he's back in town because she still finds him attractive and she doesn't want to ruin their friendship well he comes back in town and all of a sudden he's like wait was hazel always this beautiful like who is this woman you know the typical like his eyes are opening at last i see the light moment um so yeah we'll see how this goes hopefully it's done well because i'm Oh, the best friends to more. I just want to shake them. I'm like, just talk to each other. You're best friends. But I also get it. So I give them grace. But if you've read any other books by Karina Taylor, there is a comment about Archie and Meyer, which are characters in Forget Me Twice, which is another book that Karina wrote. And I think it's super fun when um, the authors kind of cross and mention and have cameos of their other books and other things like that just to keep all the universes like kind of connected so it's a lot of fun it is about nine o'clock and I think that I am going to uh read for a little bit so I'll try really hard to get some footage of me reading this I feel like I'm doing terrible vlogging this whole thing I have like no footage of me reading it's just updates but once I start in the books I literally tune out the world and for forget that I'm even doing this and think oh yeah I should grab my camera and film I'm so engrossed in the book so that's my little update I'm going to read some more of easiest pie Alright friends, I'm going to do a quick update um, and then I'm going to get ready for bed. I made the executive decision, well, well first let me say, <laughs> I finished Easiest Pie by Karina Taylor. It was very cute. I ended up giving it four out of, four and a half out of five star. Um, once, like, Karina's really good about writing characters that just feel authentic in their conversations and they're just fun and I really love her characters and the tie-ins with Forget Me Twice because you meet Trip in Forget Me Twice and it's like this whole thing and Archie plays a not a huge role but like a nice size role in Trip's life um so it's just cute to see him like texting him and he had this friend and it was just so sweet and there were so many moments that just made me swoon <laughs> he takes care of her when she's sick and then like the realization of seeing her as more than just his best friend and like his soulmate was so cute and the fear that hazel faces after staying in one town her whole life and not by her own like it was her own choice but like she didn't want to kind of thing and just finding those fears and the reasons and they all make valid like they make sense they are valid choices and feelings and just the ending in chapter 33 so good um but i did finish easy as pie it was very very good so now i just have absolutely not in love to read um but it is 11 o'clock and I need to be good tonight and not to stay up until 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> My 
my makeup my bed. <laughs> I have a really big forehead when I wear this. Um, because I know that once I start this book, I'm going to want to finish it, and I just can't. So, I'm probably going to start this tomorrow, though. And then I will be officially done with the Sweater Weather series. Seven books. It's taken me longer than seven weeks, but that's all right. I had a lot of fun with it. It's been a great series. series I've had a lot of fun love the authors who are in it and I'm super excited to see what comes down the pike from all of them because I know a couple of them have made comments <laughs> about continuing continuing with some of the characters that we see in the book so it's going to be very very exciting um but yeah that's my check-in update I'm gonna go get ready for bed and start absolutely not in love tomorrow have anything to say <laughs> Oh, have a good night, everybody. See you later. <laughs> oh. mm. I'm leaving that in there just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I won't read anything tomorrow. <laughs> we'll get her on the romance book train eventually. Maybe a Christmas novella. I was for a second when I used to read Karen Woodemeyer. Yeah. You killed that. For like a week. <laughs> nuh uh. You read her books for yeah, years. I did. You need to read her new one, Ferris of Heart. It's a Snow White retelling. It's really good. Her new series is Fairy Tale, Western Fairy Tales. Getting off topic. I'll see you guys later. Bye! Remember how I said I was going to start Absolutely Not in Love the next day after I finished Easiest Pie? I didn't. I got busy. Um, it's been a little bit of a, a crazy week, but it is Thursday, which means I have Friday off and I can be completely and 100% irresponsible with my time, which I'm going to do. I'm about to lose sleep. It's 10 o'clock. I'm talking fast, but I'm about to start absolutely not in love and I probably won't finish, won't go to bed until I finish it. Um, so yeah, that's my plan for the evening. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm super excited. Felix's story, anxiously awaiting it. I'm sure it's going to go by fast because it's hockey and it's Felix and Grace. And I'm so pumped to be back in the Appy's world. Even though we never really left because we've been in Harvest Hollow. But like, it just feels different. So, I have my DC Eagles hoodie on, which is not the same series. Not the same universe. This is Leah Bruner's series, but it is hockey. So, I'm in my hockey year. I don't have anything, any Appies merch yet, but I'm asking for some for Christmas. Um, so, yeah. But I'm going to go ahead and jump into Jenny's book, and I will see y'all on the flippity flop. You know that feeling when you're reading a book? and it's going really really well for the couple but there's still a hundred pages left and you can feel the third act breakup miscommunication it's coming at you and there's nothing you can do to stop it that's how I feel right now this is super cute I love Felix so much. He's so sweet. He really is perfect. I don't understand what, what, why is he so perfect? Probably because he's fictional. And Gracie is so cute. And it's throwing me off because her name is Gracie Mitchell. And it just keeps reminding me of the author, Gracie Ruth Mitchell. But it's fine. But she's so sweet. And they have like this forced proximity enemies. To love her, he falls first and hard. And it's cute. And the text threads. And just all the things. But there are a hundred pages left. And he has a book. His bookcase. He, He's a library guy. I, when I tell you this character is perfect. 
but he calls his bookshelves in his little library Ivy. Okay? Only one other person knows that Ivy is a bookshelf or a library. And I have a feeling that the miscommunication is that gonna be is one of his teammates is gonna make a stupid comment about how Ivy feels about it and she's gonna blow up because she had some issues with cheating in the past with a past hockey player and that's why she won't date hockey players. And my hypothesis is that she's going to blow it out of proportion instead of talking to him and remembering all the amazing things that he did and who he was as a person and that he is not that man. Her first initial re reaction is going to be to cut him off, be mad, and say, this is why I don't date hockey players. I was right. They're all the same. And then... Ten pages before the book ends, maybe five, she'll realize she's wrong. It'll be this great thing. Kiss, makeup, yay, all done. That's my hypothesis. I could be wrong. We'll see. There's a hundred pages left, and I'm sure a third act breakup is coming because it's going too well. So I'll check on with you when I'm done. Okay, bye. All right, friends. It's two a.m. Hold on. You seem very zoomed in yeah okay hi um it's 2 a.m just finished absolutely not in love and i'm between a four and a four and a half i have my goodreads rating right now at four and a half um but it feels a little four-ish too but like four I'm, I'm between it was very good it's another great clean hockey romance this one is definitely more hot than the other ones that are on the market currently. Um, this one is definitely has more described kissing and more like talk of sex and physical things. Nothing is explained or done on page, but well, other than like heavy makeout scenes, but things are definitely talked about in this one so that's not your vibe if you don't enjoy it maybe skip out on this one but the story was so sweet Felix was literally perfect tall dark handsome athletic he's a book person and he's a music nerd but he had this like he had social anxiety that he went to see, he went to a therapist for, and he talks about therapy, which more and more I'm loving that that's becoming a thing. One, that characters are talking about therapy in general, but that, like, the guy characters are going to therapy and are so open about talking about it, so, and the help that they get from it. Love that. And then Gracie was just really sweet. Oh, I should go back to why he went to therapy. He had social anxiety, and then he dealt with, um, like being a people pleaser and not being able to say no due to um, like n feeling inadequate like he was always having to prove something that prove that he was enough and he was doing a good job hardcore relatable though um, and then Gracie was really sweet she was anti-hockey and one thing I loved about her was even though she was anti-hockey sport, she was never nasty to the players. Like, she didn't take it out on them necessarily. She was a little, like, aloof and she wasn't very outgoing to, like, make friends with them. But she also knew that she had to be cordial and, like, that was her neighbor and those were his hockey, like, his his teammates. Like, they still needed to coexist. Um, but then once she did start talking to him, she got very friendly and she was friendly with the team and it was just very nice um but her reason her reasoning for not enjoying hockey and kind of swearing it off made sense once you kind of saw her childhood and some of the things that she went through and the feelings that she went through um of just not being chosen not being the one that they that their that her parents saw um it just it made sense so it was very very sweet i love their connection there was forced proximity there was a little bit of like enemies but not really like to more um he falls first and he falls hard i know i talked about that and i would like to eat my words 
They taste bad, but I'll eat them. Um, there was no third act breakup. There was a, um, like, hey, like, this situation happens, and she's like, I need to take a couple days. And it totally made sense, um, but she was still rational. She talked through it, like, she worked through it, and then it led up to one of the best, like, declarations of love ever. Um, so I think it worked really well for their story. So props, but I'm telling you, I was biting my nails. Like, I was ready for that third act breakup hammer to drop. Like, things were just going too well, you know? And I was just waiting. I was like, oh, it's coming, and it's gonna tick me off. There's still 100 pages, but it was done really well. No, like, real third act breakup and a great declaration of love from both characters. It was just very sweet. There was a lot of tension in this one, a lot of built-up uh, chemistry. So, again, I, I enjoyed it, but I'm trying to decide if it was like four or four and a half. So I did finish, finish Absolutely Not In Love, which means I have officially finished all seven books in the Sweater Weather series. This vlog did take me longer than seven weeks because I did take a couple week break while I was just going through some things, but I finished and I enjoyed every minute of it. Series Again, such an amazing fall series. This lineup of authors, amazing, truly. Um, blown away, such a talented group of women, such amazing ladies, and I'm so, so thankful that they did it. I'm excited to see if they ever do anything again. I love when authors do multi, multi-author mashups. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. It's probably going to be super long, and I apologize for not getting a ton of reading shots. I know I talked about it in a previous clip, but once I got into the books, I literally forgot that I was filming a vlog, and I just flew through them. Like, I just sat down and read them within, like, two to four hours depending on like what I had going on so I was just totally totally in love with them <laughs> um and that happens uh when I get into into books like that so I apologize there's not a lot of clips of me reading but I hope you enjoyed my updates let me know if you've read any of the books in the sweater weather series if you follow any of the authors if you're planning on reading any of them um or just anything like that. I'd love to know in the comments below. Don't forget you can check out my blog at fortheloveofchristianfiction.blogspot.com. You can also check out my Instagram at fortheloveofchristianfiction. All my other links are in the description box below. I think that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!